Ladies and gentlemen, Patrick Kirby is about to come on, and we are going to be doing good, better, and awesomer, and we'll tell you a little bit more about what that means, and there is no typo there. That is what we meant, <laughs> and we're going to have a lot of fun, so make sure you stay tuned. Patrick is off the charts with his energy, with his fun, with just his perspective and love for life, so definitely stay tuned. Before that, if you are an entrepreneur, an influencer, someone who wants to change the world, number one, get in contact with me. I would love to hear about your story, your journey, and how we can support you at becoming your greatest possible self. And number two, if there's a message you want to get out and you want to create your own platform, I love supporting people in starting their own podcasts and their own platforms and launching that. So if you have questions about that or just want support in it, let me know. I'm happy to share with you what I did to start my podcast and how I've kept it going for over two two years, almost two and a half years. So we are on fire with this ish. So let's keep it going. Next up is going to be the iTunes review of the week. And this week it's by Chaim K. I believe that's how you say it. Like a nav system for your soul. This podcast is aptly named GPS. The majority of men and women lead lives without a map, an overview of the big picture. This podcast will help you navigate through life and truly become your best possible self. That's right, we will. And if you want to give us a review, definitely go subscribe, beergps.com forward slash iTunes. Give us a review. Let us know what you love, what you want to see more of, how we can improve the show and make it even better for you. We love hearing that feedback and thank you in advance for doing that. Next, I'm going to be introducing Patrick. Before that, though, Grab a piece of paper, grab a pen, be ready to take notes. I don't know if you're going to be able to keep up with this epic energy and this fireball of transformation and inspiration and motivation and co-creation that we are going to be igniting here and do your best. I know I'm, I'm just going to acknowledge you for doing your best to keep up because this is going to be incredible what Patrick and I are going to create. Also, make sure you stay tuned all the way through till the end because you never know what one idea is going to transform the rest of your life. So if you're ready to ignite into the best possible human you can be and do good, better, and awesomer and really make a difference and serve people in the process, definitely stay tuned. Let's introduce Patrick Kirby and bring him on the screen. Patrick Kirby is the founder of Do Good Better Consulting and a believer that we've always done it this way is the most dangerous phrase in the English language. Patrick has spent over 15 years working in nearly every capacity in the nonprofit industry for organizations of all shapes and sizes, organizing $10,000 cure walks to $1 million galas. He cut his donor relations and fundraising teeth as the alumni coordinator at his former high school before working as the senior development director at the Cystic Fibrosis working as oh, Cystic Fibrosis Foundation and most recently worked as the chief development officer of the Ann Carlson Center. His first book, Fundraise Awesomer, A Practical Guide to Staying Sane While Doing Good, will be published this summer. And we are blessed to have him here with us today. Patrick, are you ready to rock the house, sir? Woo! <laughs> we are now live on Becoming Your Greatest Possible Self, and we are about to do good even better with you here. Thank you so much for being here, man. Um, I've been so stoked for this. Ever since I saw that Final Fantasy gif in my messenger, you know, I yeah. just knew, I knew the magic was coming. <laughs> it was meant to be. Uh, first off, uh, so two quick things. One, thank you so much for, for having me on. This is fantastic. Uh, I love what you do. The, uh, the sort of positivity into the world kind of thing is amazing and I love it. Uh, number two, I kind of have a bone to pick with you uh, because I'm usually the most enthusiastic person in the room. And so now I have like strict competition. And so I'm kind of, ex <laughs> kind of excited about it. And I feel, I feel like the internet is going to, is not prepared for, not. for <laughs> it doesn't know what's coming. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> oh, thank you, Patrick. I appreciate you, man. And uh, I appreciate you being here. And just who you are in the world is, is a powerful force for good as well. So let's dive right in to the theme of the day. Today, it's live events that change lives. And I know you've been a part of some incredible live events and, and charity or auctions, organizations, stuff like that. So tell us about your experience with live events, man. Um, I, I, Okay, so I come from the fundraising world, so uh, not everyone in in fundraising likes events, right? They're logistical nightmares. <laughs> uh, it's a lot of work. You never know what your ROI is going to be. But I've I've been a real big believer in live events, mostly because 
you can trap people in a room, right? <laughs> <laughs> and you can control the atmosphere and the message and you yeah. can spread the good word about what your organization does, what great things you have to talk about. Mm. And I think the, I think people don't look at that as an opportunity. They always mm. think about it as a burden. And man, I, I just think there are uh, there are a handful of things uh, that uh, that are better than uh, than an event. Um, maybe a face to face conversation with somebody who just loves your organization. Yep. Not many more things than that. I mean, I really do think that those are just the best. And you've got a wonderful platform. And if you've got great sound and you've got a great tablescape and you've got great dinner, you you create the mood. Yep. Right. You like consider it dating when you're yeah. doing it with the, as a with a donor and you're kind of like, all right, how are we gonna how are we gonna do this? And then um, I mean, it's just amazing. So I, I love them. I think they're great. Uh, they're a lot of work, but the payoff is unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. It's like I, I see the social proof. You know, the 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 beautiful result of an experience. Like yes. you can't get that necessarily outside of an event. You know, it's like oh. you get to create this this environment, this atmosphere that is that is unmistakable, that is irreplaceable, and it's it's freaking magic, man. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. It's great. It's, it's incredible. Yep. So, Pat, tell us a little bit more about who you are, what your clients come to you for, and how you serve people, man. Sure. Um, so, I am uh, the founder of Do Good Better, and we're a consulting firm that kind of helps nonprofits raise money. Um, makes nonprofits understand that fundraising is amazing and fun. It doesn't have to be depressing. Um, <laughs> I make it a lot easier and simpler. I, I don't like the idea of this being way complex. I get mm way easier and i think a lot of people come to me or ask me questions or or ask me to work with them because they've overcomplicated everything yeah. they're yeah. trying to do too many things and they're getting away from really the the nuts and bolts about what works well yeah. um, because there's a shiny object over here mm. and uh and they kind of chase after that and then they come back and they forget what they're doing and they kind of waffle back and forth and so it's crazy um but the the simpler you make things the better you become at fundraising. And I kind of weed out all the stuff you don't need and say, are you doing these amazing things well? Yeah. And if not, you should. And uh, maybe you can work on a couple of these things. And we do it in very tangible and, and, uh, mm -hmm. and achievable ways uh, so that you, you're not overwhelmed uh, with anything that way too. So Yeah, yeah. so simple. I think people overcomplicating it makes it so the message doesn't land when you're raising the funds, right? It's like, it, it's, it's so easy to simply say, Hey, I really care about this. Do you want to contribute? Do you want right. to help this vision come into reality? It's easy to do that. There might be some nuances right. and stuff yeah. in addition to that. And that's, that's the general mission. <laughs> it's what it is. I, it, it's storytelling. If, yeah. Can you tell, do you like where you work and can you tell that story? Congratulations, you're a fundraiser, right? Wow. There's just, you. all you gotta do is set the table and people will eventually ask you, I mean, this is the ultimate secret, which is how can I help, mm. right? Yeah. They will ask you how you can help. Now, you have to be prepared for that answer, yep. right? So yep. that's where the work comes in, right? Mm. So you have to have a uh, an answer for your $100 will do this, your mm. time will impact this, your uh, name that you give me of somebody who can help will accomplish this. And that yeah. takes a lot of the, the heavy lifting and the work behind it. Yeah. But really, essentially, your fundraising is telling your story as many times as you possibly can and finding that that handful of people who just say, I buy into what you're doing. I love what you're doing. And let me support. The other thing, too, and the other, I mean, I'm kind of a heretic in the nonprofit world for saying this, <laughs> but I think that the messenger is more important than the message occasionally, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. If, you're, if you've got the best mission in the world, right? You're helping, uh, the two ones that people always say is easiest to fundraise for, dogs and kids, right? So let's just hypothetically say you've got an, a nonprofit organization that is uh, uh, kids with dogs, right? Okay. It's the Dogs and Kids Foundation. <laughs> Pretty easy to fundraise for, I guess. So if you go into a meeting and you're like, well, I guess I guess I've got this um, this foundation and it's pretty it's pretty good. Stop! 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 Like, I, hate, I already hate I already hate it. But if you but if you have somebody who is boundless energy and who mm. is really passionate about it and make a connection 
And then is listening to what other people want, right? Yeah. You can't force feed your your uh, your beliefs or whatever on them, right? You have to understand where they're coming from. Yep. You have to listen for cues. You have to have intuition. And once you build a relationship with them, they want to give it to you because they feel like their gift is going to make an impact and they're going to feel great about it. And we're pre-programmed as humans to like feel good when we give and yeah. it just it becomes this wonderful symbiotic relationship that not a lot of people can get to because they can't get past the fact that they only tell stories and build relationships that's it mm. that's all you need to do mm. dude this is so gold Simple. pat i love it Simple. i love it man <laughs> this is gold so we're gonna go back into your journey because our audience wants to know how did pat get so much energy how did he become a heretic in the <laughs> in the fundraising world no just kidding i love it though i love that like if you are not an effective messenger and aligned with yourself then you're not going to be able to deliver any message no. effectively so you that have discovered so yeah that authenticity yeah. is so key man i mean you talk about it all the time right yeah. so be your be your honest be your best self but be yeah. your honest self right yeah. you're, not, you're not anybody who you aren't you've established that i'm going to be this person and this is what i'm going to do and whatever People buy, people believe that. You don't need to have them buy into it. They believe it. And that is so critical when it comes to fundraising for sure. Mm, yeah. And, and you know what I've found is like, it's it's not even being over there of if they do or don't believe it anyways, it's just to be all 100% over here of this is who I am and I love you as you are, but I'm just going to be me and the right people will gravitate towards that anyways. Right. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So let, yes. Let's go back into the journey, Pat. What has that been like for you? I know you started with with uh, you know, Square Games and Nintendo and Final Fantasy. <laughs> start, yes. Start and start and still go. Uh, oh. they're, re they're, they're re releasing Final Fantasy X and uh, X2. Yep. yep. Uh, on Switch. So, just an FYI, <laughs> just didn't know. Um, so I, I started, um, working in fundraising right out of college. So, um, I had a, I graduated and I didn't have a job cause I had a politics degree and mm -hmm. they don't tell you that you don't get jobs, uh, with politics history. <laughs> so my, uh, my former high school called me and said, Hey, we're looking for an, an alumni guy to kind of work for special events and, and do some, uh, some fundraising work. I was the, um, I was helping with weddings because we had a chapel at our school. So I was like the de facto wedding planner occasionally. Wow. So wow. it came in handy many a year later. It was great. <laughs> um, I, spent a, a, I spent a brief time uh, as a manufacturing sales rep. Um, and so I was selling you know, uh, small appliances like crock pots to Best Buy and Target. And it, didn't, it wasn't fulfilling at all. It was just the, the only thing that you worry about is uh, hurricanes or uh, typhoons in the Pacific for shipping issues, and then you have to explain to people why their their stuff never shows up. And it's just there's no time in life to do that over and over and over again. So uh, I quickly uh, reverted back to the nonprofit world where I worked at the uh, Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. Mm. And uh, and for those of you who don't know what cystic fibrosis is, uh, it's a it's a horrible sort of genetic disease that kind of affects the lungs and the pancreas and some of the digestive system. And at the time, there wasn't any there was an outlook of positivity, but there was nothing really on the docket for um, even remotely a cure. Right. right. So I started working there. We started doing these really amazing events, and all of a sudden, I was working at an organization that was. Um, almost venture philanthropy. Uh, they did venture philanthropy. They coined wow. the term of it. So wow. they would invest in small companies that no one else would hmm. that were on the brink of like revolutionary stuff. So there was a wow. small company in the middle of nowhere that had a, uh, they had the idea that we could genetically modify cells, right? Through a pill form. And I was like, that doesn't make any sense. They're like, yeah, it does, but we need a lot of money. So we ended up having a conference call like halfway, you know, through my tenure there, like, okay, we're going to dump like a half a million dollars into this company and we hope that they get a result. We're like, now we got to raise more money. This is terrible. Uh, this is horrible. And at the time, I think, I don't think the, the lifespan of those with CF was more than 30 years old. And a couple of years later, we've got really fundraising success across the country and they have some hits on like drugs that are coming out of, and you get this you, you don't have anything to do with the drug stuff, but you're a right. part of this yes. amazing vibe that's developing wow. like life-changing stuff. 
And like, if you don't get hooked on that, oh man, you're just, you're crazy. And you develop these friendships with families who go through sickness and health again and sickness yeah. and health. And they become some of your close family members and you become on a mission, man. Like I'm going to go raise money and I'm going to do amazing things. And, and, uh, and it was just a blast. I got addicted to the idea of fundraising and storytelling and doing all this stuff. So then I, uh, I take a, I said, I kind of achieved some goals in Minneapolis. Uh, my, my, my now wife is from the kind of Fargo, North Dakota area. So okay. we moved up there. I fell in love with it. I said, let me, t let me open up a, a, like an office so I can kind of do some fundraising up here. Um, and then I got recruited out to work at the, as a chief development officer of the Ann Carlson center. And this, and this place is, uh, is based in, in James middle of nowhere, North Dakota. And it was, uh, it was essentially a school plus acute hospital for kids with really serious medical issues, right? Mm -hmm. the, the hard births that they didn't expect to survive, but did now, now where do they go? Mm -hmm. And it was an accredited school. It was an amazing hospital, took care of about, you know, 50 ish kids um, who really had no other chance to, for, for normalcy yeah. outside of here. And I was like, if you had a bad day and you're walking down the hall and kind of complaining about spreadsheets and you see a kid whose doctor said they would never talk or walk and he's sprinting down the hallway, you know, going, what's up? I mean, your whole life shifts. And if you don't have perspective after that, it's crazy. Um, so so I, it was the best job I ever had. I got to run a team of fundraisers, and raise millions of dollars. And it was fantastic. But I always had this innate sense of um, bringing people to have that aha light bulb moment. And I couldn't do it to other people because I had a team we were running and it was kind of dedicated to the job. So I do, I've done some training for a, for, a, for a local foundation that was kind of helping people do fun, like, uh, like day fundraising days. And um, I got the bug. I got the coaching bug. I got the, 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 the idea of, if I could make this into a business, yeah. man, I could flip from one place to another, to another, to another, like a little bumblebee putting <laughs> pollen everywhere for fundraising. And I've got, I've got uh, biz, like I've got a late onset ADD clearly. Um, and I, and I feel like in small doses, I can just be energizing everywhere. Wow. And the feedback that I'll get from somebody who's like doing great things, I'll get re-energized and I'm going to be jacked up again because they're going to be successful. So I spent about a, a year and a half uh, sort of talking with everybody I knew mm -hmm. about how this could actually be a business and jotting, jotting notes on cocktail napkins and just filling books, just, I mean, just books of just notes I would just fill. And um, I finally took a leap and I said, I think this is gonna be good. I think it's gonna be a big hit. And uh, took a leap to start my own uh, business and we're almost two years in. And it's just, the train's not stopping. It's just, it is full bore. So I wanna, I, wanna, I wanna dive into that. I think you said two really important things there. I wanna make sure our audience gets the gold. Um, one is you spent about a year and a half doing some like market research to see the viability of this business opportunity that you are considering. Tell us how important that was in your success. <laughs> so, I mean, great, great point. I, so a lot of people are like, oh, you started your own business. That's great. That's so brave of you. And I was like, it is, but I'm methodical about it where, you know, you need to build out, you know, have a plan, right? Yeah. So the idea kind of was spurred on if I take small and medium sized nonprofits and concentrate on that, right? They've mm -hmm. got the biggest upside because they want it. Yeah. Um, they have... Um, the, the, the harder, the hardest working folks, because they're doing multiple things, right? They're, they're wearing 17 different hats. And I said, if I can make them viable, this is going to be amazing. But like, how do you, how do you do that? Mm -hmm. So really it was important to scratch out what the, what the structure would be, what I would offer, who I could chase after what that would look like. Um, then, then it was really purposely building a, a brand to lift up others and lead with appreciation. And those two things, man, that changed everything because now it became not me lifting up one organization or one group. It was everybody I come in contact with, how can I help? So in two years, I've never said no to a coffee meeting. Not one. Never said, no, I can't do that. I said, we'll fix it and we'll find a time. And sometimes my schedule looks like uh, some crazy person got into it. <laughs> 
but that's okay because I'm meeting such amazing people. And even if I can't help, I'll figure out uh, you need to go see here or you need to go do this. And it wasn't about me charging for a coffee meeting because I've never done that. It wasn't about me charging for a phone call because I'll never do that. But what I wanted to do was give value and, and validation about what they're doing right yeah. for everything, right? Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think a lot of people in the nonprofit industry especially don't feel like they are um, doing as well as they can. And, yeah. and, I, and I'm here to tell you, you are. You're just comparing yourself to everybody else and you're not taking the time to kind of uh, to flush out what impact you're making. Yeah. That's super important. But it took a long time to build the market. My question was, I'm like, this is a great idea, but nobody's in this market to do small, medium-sized nonprofit work and what this looks like. So either A, somebody tried it and it was a terrible idea and they failed miserably, <laughs> or nobody was crazy enough to do it. And it turned out it was the latter. Wow. And and that's kind of how it came to fruition. So it was it was a long journey of kind of like, well, I can't do this and I don't I'm not talented I a lot of that imposter syndrome of you don't have enough experience in the field and you've never run a capital campaign to its mm. like okay like groups who are run, raising a hundred thousand dollars a year aren't doing capital campaigns nor should they mm. right mm. I have no desire to do it I want to get into the dirt and kind of work um, with, with with smaller groups and come up with those simple things that they're not doing yeah. so that they can feel empowered to go out and do it yeah. And one other thing that I wanted to highlight is how many years were you um, in the nonprofit arena and in industry before you decided to go out and start your own business? Yeah, like 13. Yeah. I mean, okay. it was it was a long and even yeah. even a stint as is in sales in like yeah. the actual for profit sales gave me wonderful perspective on how to you know run budgets and this. Yeah. And so everything came into line. I'm like, this is kind of great. You know, one of the things that I forgot to mention, and I, I forget to mention all the time because it involves politics, but uh, I, when I graduated with a politics degree, I'm like, I'm going to run for office, man. This is going to be my thing. <laughs> I was like, great. So at 24, I decided to run for the House of Representatives, and I kind of did that whole thing. So here's live work. <laughs> Sorry. Here's a dog. I have a dog. Grover. Live Grover TV. saying, that would have been such a bad idea. <laughs> this is terrible. This is awful. Um, anyway, so... Gort. He's just gonna stick there. This is gonna be great. Great, great. Good live, everybody. Good pick. I ran, so I ran for office. Grover, come here. Hey, now nah, come here. So I ran for I ran for office and um, I lost. Just whipped to to the core. It was terrible. But I raised more money than I was legally allowed to spend, like in a campaign. And so looking back on it, I mean, there was all these little things that I was doing to actually make an impact. And I was a really good fundraiser, but I was just like a terrible tactician of, of politics. But that, and along with like fundraising in college and high school and all these little activities was like a really good thing. It was awesome. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So in terms of really discovering your own, your, your purpose and mm -hmm. catching that stride. Like yeah. You did. yeah. 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 For people who are looking for that early on and they're attempting to cultivate that, that feeling of this is where I belong and this is yeah. what I meant to do. Like, is there any tips you'd recommend, especially the entrepreneurs out there who may not have the track record of experience in an industry to create that confidence and the connections and the network? Like what yeah. would you recommend to those up and comers? Do it. Hmm. Don't worry about it. Do it. And, and I, will tell you, I will tell them the same thing I tell nonprofit folks to do it. Uh, do it. And if yeah. you think you don't have enough material or you don't have all the answers, it's okay. Nobody yeah. cares, right? And, and, and two, so two points to this, because I think this is really important. I think a lot of people don't take a leap of faith or they don't mm. try something because they don't think they're cut out for it or they don't mm. think they have all the answers and they wait until they build the materials and the websites and this, and I got to have the funnel. And then once I have the funnel, then I'm going to have this. And then, and they spend their entire life building and mm. never doing mm. same thing with the nonprofit world, right? So if you don't think, you know, your industry or you don't think you have enough experience fundraising and so you never go out and have conversations with donors, you'll never figure out what you are missing. Nope. Here's the thing. So let's just hypothetically say you're uh, in a, well, I'll reverse engineer this a nonprofit as an entrepreneur. Okay. So as a nonprofit, you go out to a donor and you say, Hey, I've got this wonderful organization and I know you like kids and we serve kids and I think it's going to be great. And they might ask you a question that you don't know. Okay. It's okay to say, I don't know. 
Great. I just gave you permission to not know everything. And because here's the thing, you can say, I don't really know that right now, but if, can I connect with you maybe later and then give you the answer when I go research it? And they say, yes, you have another touch point and another opportunity to make a relationship and make it stronger. Mm. Same thing in the entrepreneur world, right? If you don't know anything, do it, right? You're not, if you're an entrepreneur just starting out, you're not dumping $10 million into a, a, a product company. Right? You're, <laughs> you're investing your time and energy and you will learn very quickly by not, uh, by not knowing everything, mm. by just experiencing it. And then, then your proof in the field and then coming up with solutions and being intuitive and kind of having reactions mm. is exactly what people are looking for. They're looking for doers. They're not looking for eternal planners. Wow. Dude, that's that's gold. So get in there, take action. I love it. And that's Do it. it's it's did you were you that person? Were you the doer or were you like more hesitant to take those leaps of faith in the, in your journey in the beginning? Ter terrified of risk. Yeah. Terrified of risk. And I, you know, I think that I think being scared of risk actually made it a little I, I was a little more methodical in my rollout just because mm -hmm. I'm I I mean I had three kids when I took a leap. Yeah, wow. I, we had, we had our third, uh, little baby girl at, uh, and about three months later I decided, I'm like, honey, I think I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to do this now. And I, I talked about it, you know, at dinner time and mumbled it under my breath, but I didn't really give her a game plan uh -huh. Her, of course her reaction was so, um, about insurance. Do we, do we not need that anymore or what? <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, she's, she's, she's the intelligent one. So she's go, well, you know, you might want to figure that out first before you do anything. And, and, uh, and, and so to be measured in your, uh, in your risk, but that that's risky right there. Yeah. So I didn't have the luxury of being single and, and, and hungry for business. Mm -hmm. I had, uh, you know, mortgage and a family and insurance and leaving a, a really, really well paid paying gig yeah. to just go, ever but the interesting but the interesting thing that somebody told me before i before i did it and it was um i asked a lot of entrepreneurs who i who i respected in multiple industries yeah and i always asked them the question what how did you know when to take the leap yeah. right that that my ultimate question was that and and um and you know they get the, some of the answers like well you don't really know till you know and whatever but one person who sticks out, and uh, and Rebecca's her name, and she's an entrepreneur and an author, and 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 worked with me at a former uh, former place of employment. She asked me a question back to that question. She said, um, "Well, can you get another job?" And I was like, "Well, what do you mean?" She's like, "Well, if you quit today and things go to hell in a handbasket in six weeks and you just can't cut it, can you get another job?" And I go, "Well, yeah." He's like, "Well, would it be the best job in the world?" And I go, "Well, no." but could you get a job and you could pay your bills and you could just move forward and, and learn from it? I go, uh-huh. And she goes, <laughs> and I was like, you got me, you got me. And I think that was what it was. You know, it was, what am I really giving up? I'm giving up a, uh, a, a you know, a, a position I loved, mm. but it wasn't, it was a job. I would yeah, go to work was, and I was saying, I will never be able to attain this level of happiness, money, position ever again. It's just saying, Hey, this is awesome. I know I can do it. And I think yep. there's, there's something else better over here. I'm going to take a bet on it. <laughs> you bet on yourself. And, and, yeah. and I don't think a lot of people bet on themselves. And mm. I think they, they run the risk of um, getting past the point of, Hey, this, it might come and go. But there's all you always if you always want to be an entrepreneur, you always want to do something amazing. It's it's racking in the back of your yeah. brain. You get rid of it. And and I think not doing it would have been a really bad, you know, how would how would that be to to my kids? Mm. Right. How do I want how do I want to represent um, sh going for it or, or doing your dreams? If my kid comes and says, I want to be an artist, I think I've got the talent to do it. And I don't know if there's any money in it, but I think I'm good enough to do this, this and this. Mm. And, and he's looking at his dad who never followed what mm. he thought would be a great thing. Well, how, how am I, how am I doing him a service as a father? Mm. And I, and I know that's not what a lot of people think about, but really when it comes down to it, that's super important. Yeah. You know, my, my dad took a leap and, and started his own business. So it's kind of genetically embedded in my brain. Yeah. And, and I asked him about it too. And he goes, well, just get ready to sleep on the couch for six months because it's not a good idea. <laughs> You know, he had three kids in private school at the time. 
Dang. So, I mean, he, he did a whole thing and didn't take a paycheck for like a whole year. Wow. So, I mean, I mean, that's the kind of risk reward that you, that you get, but it was done. He did it purposely. And I knew that if he could do it, you know, I, I've got it in me and the same way that I want to pass it on generationally, if that's something that they want to do, they've got a, they've got a roadmap of, of, of somebody who took a leap and took a leap of faith and believed in themselves. And if I can pass that on, yeah, but that's good. That's, that's, that's good stuff from, from a dad standpoint, I think. Yeah. And even, even like, let's say it didn't turn out awesome, which it has for you and congratulations on all the momentum. And I, I think it's really a testament to you, the, the amount of giving that you do and how much your, your heart is in everything you do. Like you're just there to serve. And then the opportunities just keep pouring in for you, which is incredible. You know, like yeah. you're just living that. But I also think that if you didn't work out, if somebody's venture didn't work out, I would rather be the model of, hey, how do you bounce back from failure for yeah. your kids yeah. than to say, you know, I'm just going to play it safe for, yep. for the rest of my life. And by the way, kids, play it safe because that's all I've modeled. I might tell you to take risks, but I've never taken a risk. So it's out of integrity yeah. and you're not going to follow it. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. just do it. <laughs> you, know, it you know, it's interesting. And I, and I think it, it's really funny. So, um, so my oldest um, had up until, I mean, he, so in kindergarten, he got really nervous on stage and, uh, and and didn't do a spring concert. And it's been it's been in his brain that I just have stage fright, right? Mm -hmm. So I I'm not going to do this. And and I said, well, you know, your dad talks on stages. That's not okay. And he still was kind of nervous about it. And um and we were talking about it. We were talking about risks and we were talking about look at how great this is going to be. You're going to do well and kind of pushing and encouraging as much as I possibly can. Yeah. And you know, sure enough. Last concert a couple weeks ago, kid gets on stage, sings his heart out, turned a little red in the face, kind of embarrassed, but yep. like we all are yep. occasionally yep. on stage. Yep. And he pushed through. And I, now I've got something to relate to. I said, listen, you know, when you get, you know, you don't know if you can do it, do it and look what happened, right? You get this wonderful mm. high of, I did it, I performed. Yeah. You know, mom and dad are stoked, we're high fiving and hugging afterwards. And I think that's the kind of leap and that's the kind of thing that, that this entrepreneur journey, um, I can look back on and say, hey, this is an example of what you can do too. So Yeah, yeah. And, and I think it's cool because you are out there pioneering in and having the courage to to be that role model. And when there's people who you're talking to, organizations, nonprofits who are afraid to do things differently or they're afraid to, you know, like get outside of their comfort zone, ask for help, whatever it might be, you can really be relatable to them to give them right. the support and the inspiration that they need. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, again, do it. I mean, that's yeah. a, a, it's the number one thing that holds people back. They're just so nervous about saying the wrong thing. Yeah. And, and if you say the right thing, look, think about what happens. Right. And if you say nothing at all, you'll never know. And yeah. that I think eats away at, at, at people who work in fundraising a lot um, that, that they, ne they never know until yeah. they actually ask. And that's really the important piece to it. So, mm. What, yeah. what is important for you to, to be a good human being doing good, doing better, you know, like how do, how do we do good better? I, I think you start and you, you begin and you end with gratitude mm -hmm. and appreciation and lifting up others. I think if you, if you spend your professional life telling other people about what wonderful things they're doing mm -hmm. and you're known as the person who is enthusiastically and like just being a champion and you yeah. hold no sort of like ill will against other people's successes and you're just going out there and being a champion for their for their great abilities or whatever you, you can't you can't miss you can't you can't miss and i and i think in the nonprofit industry and in fundraising we know that we have to write a thank you note Right. So we have to write a thank you note and it's just it's fine. You don't write a thank you note. You're not going to you're not going to get money back. We all know that. But I think challenging that it's true. I mean, no write a thank you note and somebody doesn't give you a gift anymore. That's on you. I, I <laughs> but I think we ch I think I like challenging the idea of what appreciation to others means. And I mm. think that means lifting somebody up when they don't expect it mm. and, an un and an unexpected uh, appreciation note or an unexpected gratitude note is one of the more powerful pieces. Yeah. Have you ever gotten, have you ever gotten a note from somebody you haven't heard in a while? And they said, Hey, I saw you on so-and-so and, and I, Hey, great job with, yeah. with no ask whatsoever. There's mm. not like, Hey, do you want to join my multi-level marketing? <laughs> nope, nope. It's not, 
It's just, hey, good job. I saw you there. Great. Or you, you, you write something or you get a post on social media that somebody says, hey, great, great work. Yeah. Unsolicited with nothing else. Mm. And I think we forget because social media gets us out so quickly and we, we require those quick highs all the time yeah. about how meaningful that is. And so mm -hmm. as, a, as an exercise in some of the courses, in some of the trainings that I do, we'll practice unexpected gratitude. And so mm -hmm. if you can you indulge me for just a second because yes. for, the, for the viewers. Yeah. So for those of you who are watching in the replay or live, uh, do yourself a favor and grab your phone while we're doing this. Chris, you can do this too, right? And it's scroll down, scroll down to the 25th person in your text message, okay. right? 20, 25th. And just send them a note saying, hey, uh, thought of you today. Uh, hope you're doing well. Just want to say how much I appreciate you. Uh, or hey, just appreciate you, thought of you today. Hope you're having a great day, right? Hmm. No prompting with anything else. An unexpected thank you text. Try it. And if you, again, in the responses, if you get them, just drop the responses like that was really weird because that's what the person will, <laughs> because, that's what, because that's what the person on the other end is going to receive. Like, right? you're going to go, well, their, their first reaction is going to be like, whoa, well, what do you want? <laughs> Nothing, which makes it so great. And, yeah. and then you've now impacted that person for the rest of the night or the rest of the day just by being grateful for them or saying thank you or lifting them up or showing appreciation. And I think that type of attitude and that type of um, uh, joy and appreciation of the world, that, that changes uh, everything. That changes the game to be a, a, a do-gooder, I think, in general. <laughs> I love it. So it's uplifting people. When did you find out that that was a, a key part of who you are and the impact that you want to leave on others around you? I think it was in this entrepreneurial journey, I think is really where it hit me the most is because um, I, I spent a long time just meeting with as many people as possible and just being interested in, in yeah. kind of what they were talking about. And either it was two things. One, hey, thanks for talking with me about that. Nobody has said I'm doing a good job lately. Or I feel frustrated because I, I think I have too many things uh, that I'm doing incorrectly, and you just told me I'm doing them, you know, a, a little bit more difficult than I am horribly, right? Right. And, and all of a sudden, like, boy, this this is not hard hmm. to be a good person, first of all, yes. and it's not difficult to just bring joy to everybody. It's the small little pieces hmm. that then that sort of trigger these other things. Um, there's a it's a wonderful, and again, this is about like your choice. You can mm -hmm. choose to do this or you can just choose to be ignore or not be grateful. Mm -hmm. And really what, what, who do, who wants to be the recipient of an uncheerful, ungrateful human being? <laughs> like, I don't think many people would choose that, right? Everybody <laughs> wants to be, cho to choose to be, uh, uh, to be lifted up and they yes. want to be recognized. That's, that's all they want. All they mm -hmm. want. Mm -hmm. Hmm. What what would you say have been some of the results that you've experienced because of being that way in your mm -hmm. professional or personal life? Um, from a from a professional standpoint, I think the 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 more I lift up with no expectation of anybody doing anything else hmm. has led to ninety five percent of my business. Hmm. It's all it's all referral based on. I believe that you can do this and I'm going to, you know, whatever. I, I don't, I love the idea of just hopping on a call like this with somebody for 25 minutes. I go, how can, how can I help? I had a, I had a, um, one of the most amazing mentors, uh, when I first moved up here, uh -huh. um, who did the same thing for me. Right. And so when I would be having a, a really hard time as a fundraiser and you just, it was just one of those days, I would get a random phone call or a random email from him and he goes, Hey, I just wanted to touch base with you. And I was like, how did you, like, it was always innate. Like it was always on those worst days. And, and I would say, well, I'm having a pretty crappy day. And he would say, all right, I'm gonna give you 10 minutes to complain about it. And then we're going to figure out how a solution is. And then we'd walk through it. Wow. And at the end he would always say, you know, Hey, you're doing a great job. Keep up the good work. Hmm. Simple. Right. Yeah. I never got an invoice. I never got a fee. I never got a, a, a high pitch like or a high pressure sales pitch for anything else. 
it was always just because he wanted to see other people succeed. And, and when he passed away, there's this giant void, I think, in, in the industry that nobody was filling. And I'm, I am, a, I am a, a shadow of what he, I mean, he's a monument to the nonprofit industry. And I will never, I, I, will, I will be worthy to wear the, the, the shoe shine on his shoes, to be honest. <laughs> but, but, if I can, but if I can take what he taught me about yeah. lifting up and being, uh, being, having the ability to um, make people feel great at the end of the day. Yeah. And, and I do that. I, I, it doesn't matter because the results will speak for themselves. They'll, you'll, people will gain more confidence. They say, well, I can do this. Hmm. Uh, I'm at least one person believes in me. I have a roadmap and I'm going to go and, and kick a lot of butt. And if I can do that, man, that's the best, that's the best pro thing ever, ever, hmm. ever. Hmm. Mm, I love it, man. It's yeah. just like really, really creating that memory in people's lives. You know, like, hey, you're you're awesome. You're doing good. Don't be so hard on yourself. Trust the process. Have patience. Keep showing up. Keep doing it. Because I think yeah. it's it's more of the being stuck in our head that causes the lack of results and frustration and you know yes. breakdowns and not getting back into action. So we can take the focus off ourselves and go focus on serving others and making a yes. difference for others. That's really like what will get us back to a positive, happy, joyful state. Is like when we serve others and put the focus on them, man. Again, we're, we're programmed internally yeah. to uh, want to give and give back and, and do great things. Like that's, we want that. We're fueled. Yeah. It's the same sort of chemical reaction that you do with it in your brain if you're taking, you know, whatever uh, to make yourself feel good with, with, with pills or whatever. It's the yeah. same thing you can get by just giving to others. I mean, that, that's the remarkable piece about this. Everybody can have this. Uh, enthusiastic high if they just go out and give back. Yeah. Mm. What What would you say is the is the legacy you're creating for yourself for your company in the nonprofit industry? What's What's the movement or the the impact that you really want to see yourself and your organization have? Yeah, I, you know, I, I think the ultimate goal is to. There's only one of me. Right. So I, I want, how do I get this to as many people as possible? Right. It's the same thing with the, with the nonprofit industry. Right. Yeah. So how do you tell your story to as many people as possible? How do you keep mm -hmm. rocking this? And so uh, my ultimate goal and my ultimate idea and how to do this is how do I get from this one to many yeah. bit? Right. So mm -hmm. platforms like this is, a, is, a, is, a, is just a, it's an honor to be here because I get to, to tell this to a swath of new people who may not, who may have needed to, to hear yes. you're doing okay you're awesome and you can go do this if you just do it right and if that happens unbelievable what what, what great things could we accomplish together or what they, could they accomplish and i think that's an interesting uh, piece to it the other thing that i think is um that i would love to leave too is the idea of um lead with lead with appreciation yeah. do do it be be appreciative be awesome uh be amazing and don't be embarrassed about it either i think that that the other thing like don't be weird out by it it's fine just be appreciative and be grateful and, and be <laughs> awesome and live it and that's on that's and that's super fun that's awesome yeah. right yeah yeah that's so. awesome um what what ha impact has having a family had on your your commitment to upliftment and empowerment and appreciation uh, I think, uh, I, I think it's, I mean, it, it's super challenging cause you're, you know, you're a dad and you've got, you know, uh, you know, your bills and things and you come home and they don't eat dinner and you kind of just go, Oh, what is the deal? <laughs> um, but I think it's, I think it's super important because again, it's that legacy that you're going to live in what they're going to look back on. You know, it, it's, it is not, you know, we're all, we're all not going to be here, you know, eventually. And yeah. so unless Elon Musk figures out how to download your brain and soul into a robot. You're, we're all not going to be here. And so what are they going to look back on and what, what did they have um, experienced, you know, as a, as a person, were you, were you good? Um, mm. were, did you lift up others? Were you the one that people came to for a question or an answer or whatever that looks like? And I think that's, um, I, I, I think I like that the best. Mm. And I think that's really about from a, from a family standpoint, I always think entrepreneurship too is, is uh, this gave me the freedom to kind of do the things that I wanted to do with them. I wasn't just in this rut and I wasn't in this, I, I'm in this space. I'm a lot, you know, I think I'm a lot happier. 
uh, just in joyful doing the things that I want to do, which means I can project that happiness to everybody else as well, a little more aggressively than I would. And I think that's <laughs> the joy that I get to bring as well. And that's kind of fun, you know? Yeah. Speaking of fun, uh, games are a big part of your life. Uh, tell us about that. What's, what's been your journey with games and video games? So I'm, I have a mild obsession with <laughs> mid nineties, uh, Squaresoft role-playing games like Final <laughs> Fantasy, Chrono Trigger, and, and whatever. And, and so and there's two parts to this. One, they're just great escapes. Like, yeah. I j I'm always high-strung, always, right? <laughs> Doctors are always like, hey, you should get the blood pressure checked. Uh, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm, but I'm high-strung all the time. But the <laughs> idea that, um, that, you can, that you can escape in this little fantasy world and you can just Man. work for, for 24 hours, there's a sense of completion, right? I, the other thing, too, is in nonprofit industry and fundraising, there's never an end game. Right. Mm. There's always another dollar to raise, always another event to handle, whatever. Yeah. This is this is really kind of a fun uh, way to have, have completion. Like, yeah. oh, I leveled yeah. up. I did this. Right. You get this level up feeling. And the other one, too, is it always matches up with those those high fantasy books like a Tolkien or, uh, or an R.R. R. Martin, where mm. you're forced to read and be creative. Mm. And if you spend your time only reading this one thing and only doing this one thing and you're always business centric and yada, 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 where's your perspective on it's how you one dimensional, um, it's one dimensional, one dimensional yeah. the whole time. Yeah. And I think that's really the interesting part about uh, video games and that kind of the gaming system is that you can then speak to an entire new genre of people, right? You relate to them a little bit better yeah. and it's super fun, right? So it's kind of cool. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> It's also equipped you to communicate with the next generation, yes. you know, like millennials and stuff. Like if you know what they're into, video games, a lot of them, yeah. uh, then you can communicate with them more effectively. That's that that extra Listen, dimension in language. I have uh, I've made it a I made it a point to uh, to bring out old school Nintendo games and make sure that my that my kids know that you'll never beat Dad. At old <laughs> like that is you you might beat me at the whatever you're playing right now if whatever but i you will get punch out with old school uh you know donkey kong games and dad's going to dad's going to run you through the the ringer just you know who's boss that's all <laughs> who's boss um but I, but i think it's an outlet and I, I i really do think just from a joy standpoint just to be i mean i've got them occasionally a maturity level of a 16 year old anyway so like let's just live it and let's just do it as a uh, you know video game instructions as well It'd be kind of fun so <laughs> i love it man i love it um what challenge what's the biggest challenge you see nonprofits having today small and medium nonprofits what's their biggest challenge i think it is uh i think it's standing out in the crowd mm. in, in north dakota alone we got 5100 nonprofits wow in North Dakota, we don't have a million people. <laughs> we have like 650,000 people here. Wow. Uh, 5,100 nonprofits. 15% of our population works at a nonprofit. Holy moly. It's in, <laughs> in, unbelievable, right? So if you've got 5,100 nonprofits, you're trying to raise a dollar here and there, right? How do you stand out in the crowd? And, and, and standing out in the crowd means you need to tell a better story and be more enthusiastic than the next person, right? Be creative. Be mm. Uh, not aggressive, but be joyful and, and do things differently and think of new events. Think of an event that nobody else has done before, hmm. right? Think of an event that is, in, uh, that is interesting to you so that you can actually uh, be joyful doing it. Um, so standing out in the crowd is super important. And I think it's believing in yourself. Hmm. A, a lot of nonprofits do not believe that they deserve some of the money or that they'll never raise that type of money. And it's this, we see this, I'm sure you see this all the time from your personal uh, sort of your coaching and, and when you bring people on is that this idea of personal abundance, yeah. right? If you don't believe that you have the ability to make money or you don't have the ability to believe that you're being successful, you're not going to be successful. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the same way with nonprofits is that they're really in, they need to figure out mm -hmm. that there is money available. There's money everywhere but they just need to go out and get it. And you need to believe that your organization is worthy mm. of getting a piece of that pie because what you're doing is amazing work, right? If you are working with um, uh, kids with disabilities and you are changing their lives by the therapy that you've developed and you're doing great things, 
believe in that. You know, don't think of like, well, this other big organization that's doing things is doing stuff a lot better than we are. So I can't, we can't compete. Who says you can't compete? Mm. I think you're holding yourself back by that. And I think that goes a lot back with the doing. And so they, they feel stifled by their inability to stand out because they don't think they're the best and they don't think they're great. And then they prevent themselves or right? it's all uh, self harm going on here um, that um, you're not, you know, being true to who you are or what you're doing and, and try to, to, to know that people want to support you, but you got to go out and get it. And you got to yeah. believe that you can go get it. Would you, would you say it's like the leadership that usually passes on those like limiting beliefs of unworthiness or is it the, the salespeople or, you know, the, the yeah. people who are raising the funds? Yeah, well, I think it's a combination of both. I think maybe leadership doesn't um, doesn't tell the right story, so they're not they're not out there saying, "Guys, you are unbelievable, and this is great." And we're not giving you the support system you might need. Hmm. But the other thing that that might happen is that they just feel that they're overwhelmed with the amount of money they have to raise, the amount of stuff that they have to do, and and I think a lot of them just don't understand that. Um, if you have that belief system or that you have that internal stuff that you can do amazing things. Um, but they're always, they're always burdened with unreasonable expectations or goals or budgets that, um, the big audacious goals, but then they're not given the tools mentally, I think, to go out and get what they need to go get in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. What do you do to, to be creative and stand out these days? What, what's mm -hmm. working for you? You know, I, I think it is, um, it's finding it's I do memes, internet memes. Uh -huh. And so everything I do is with a meme. And I think everything I respond with is a gift. And, and I think you do things because yeah, I think you do things differently. You look at a lot of these, um, you look at a lot of larger uh, group consultant consultant groups and it sounds like a law firm, right? It's like, yeah. you know, uh, Johnson, Phyllis and, you know, Lieber, whatever consulting group. And you're like, okay, that's boring. <laughs> and they sound like they don't have fun with yeah. this. And I think the idea of fundraising is important <laughs> because it's, it's in the name. It's fundraising. So I think being a little different and a little audacious and a, a little crazy at times about how we promote good and, and doing things is crazy. Mm. So internet memes is great. Yeah. Um, and then being in many places as once. So mm. uh, we're going to start a radio show and we got a list of podcasts and we do guest expert trainings and we do a whole bunch of the other things that, that I think not a lot of people are doing because they're staying, they're playing it safe. They have a methodology they need to stick to and methodology is great. But if you're not reacting to the needs or the wants of some of these smaller nonprofits, which are like 90% of everybody, yeah. And you're not uh, achieving your, um, you're not being true to yourself. You're not being authentic. I'm authentic. I'm kind of off the wall. I'm kind of a little left to center and <laughs> as sort of the, as one would see and enthusiastic. And if, if I was putting out uh, inspirational quotes with sunsets behind them, nobody would buy into that. Right. <laughs> but if I'm responding to you with a, with a, with an internet meme, yeah. you buy into that. And yep. I think that's the authentic piece about why I think this is going to be different than anybody else. That's rad, man. I love it. Yeah. I love it, Pat. So final piece of wisdom you want to give to our audience who's tuning in right now. Um, lead with appreciation no matter what, yeah. right? Lead with appreciation and gratitude and you can do no wrong. And more importantly, do it. Don't be ready for it. Don't, don't think you have everything. Just do it and learn from whatever happened afterwards and the rest is going to fall into place. Two things. Be grateful for the opportunity and go do it. That's right. hundred percent. Yes. So Pat, yes. how do people stay connected with you? What do we want them to do next? My man? I think, well, first of all, you should go and check me out on Facebook because we're yes. fun over there. That's Dude. excellent. So like, and uh, find me there. So uh, check out do good, better consulting uh, or it's uh, Facebook at DGB consulting. Uh, you can find me at do good, better consulting.com. Uh, I'm on Twitter and Instagram at fundraising dad, mm. uh, which is great. Uh, those are always fun. Um, I'm, I'm, I just got into Instagram, so it's f I'm finally learning how the ropes because all the cool things. <laughs> uh, but that's kind of fun. And then, and then all my contact information is there. Reach out to me at email, uh, email me at Patrick at DoGoodBetterConsulting.com if you got a question about uh, nonprofit work or something like that. Call me or just type me and 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 interact because. I'm here to help and serve as many places as possible. And if I don't know the answer, I'll 
I'll, I'll, I'll say that. Um, <laughs> but, if, uh, but if I can, I will help you out as best I can. And it's, yes. it's always, it's always amazing to meet new people and learn about what they're doing. Yeah. And I'm always intrigued yeah. by that because I think it's super important to do. 100%. Pat, you are an incredible human being. Anyone who's listening or watching right now, www.dogoodbetterconsulting.com. Find him on Facebook forward slash DGB Consulting and search Patrick Kirby. Get a hold of this guy. He is on fire. And Pat, thank you so much for being here. You're a powerhouse, dude. Keep Thanks, my friend. the appreciation, the gratitude, the love, the upliftment. And I know you're leaving an incredible legacy for you for your family and for your organization. So keep it up, my man. Awesome, man. Appreciate the time. Thank you, everybody. And uh, have a great one. See you soon, brother. See ya. <laughs> <laughs>